Well, hey folks, it's Dane at Jonah Guitars. I, um, I started a series probably about, probably been a couple years now, maybe more, I'm not sure. COVID, you know, I just kind of lost time. But um, it was going to be a series on the guitars that I built and that I still actually have in my possession. kid build a guitar for a senior project and that's what got me started on this journey and I always wanted a Telecaster so I decided to build myself a Telecaster. I can guess about when this was. I think it was in about two, it was before 2000 because I, um, I started this guitar and then I moved and by the time I got my house built, my shop built and all that I was I was uh, into the 2000s because then I built a, uh, I bought a, a Mexican Telecaster, the Candy Apple Red one. I don't know if I've ever shown that on the channel or not. And it was a 2000, so I'm, that kind of gives me a date. But this guitar got built actually after I purchased that one in 2000. So um, it's been, you know, 22, 21 years, somewhere in that, uh, that area. This, uh, this is an alder body. It has a maple, a maple top, quarter inch uh, maple top. It's got binding, um, which I've said a lot of times, I'm not a fan of, I don't like the sharp edge. So other guitars I've done, even though they have binding, I've, I've, I've put the arm, on, arm contour and then shave that, uh, followed it with the binding. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to build something unique because, uh, you know, Fender's been doing Telecasters since uh, 50, 49 or 50 in some form. And I know they call them different things. I'm not going to get into all the history of Fender on this. Uh, I only wanted one pickup. Uh, I was in a phase when I played guitar. I typically only played on the bridge pickup. The uh, Telecaster, however, with the bridge pickup being actually, you know, in conjunction with the bridge. This is not a Telecaster bridge. Uh, was very close and it was a single coil. It's kind of what I would call ice picky tonally Not a huge fan of that that sound and a lot of people like the Telecaster bridge uh, Sound I do now I, a lot more than I did and you know, I have a tone control, right? Not what well, I do on this guitar um, But uh, you know, so you can always just uh, pull a little of that ice pick out of your tone on your Tele bridge pickup but I decided to uh, not only uh, move it forward a bit, but I but I used a humbucker. And this happens to be the EMG Gold HZ. It's a passive uh, EMG pickup, which uh, I got at Stumac uh, many, many, many years ago. Um, I also have a switch on this that I can split. I can split the uh, pickup. So I can go from full humbucker to single coil, which is a pretty good uh, thing to do on a guitar with one pickup in case you want to have a little more tonal options Then again, you do have the tone control which you can pull, you know change tone with there uh, I, I built the neck. This is a don't forget. This is the first It's actually the second because of the one I helped the kid with but this is the first guitar I built that has the Jonah name on it and also uh, the first neck I made um, That I fretted because we bought a fretted um, fretboard for that very very first guitar and so I fretted I uh, slotted the neck it's a one it's a true one piece neck uh, the thrust rod went in through the back and uh, and I did this I mean I used routers but I didn't have jigs set up and things like that so I basically routed that skunk stripe in put the truss rod in put the bow in the in the channel with a jig I built so uh, it's not just in there straight, it has a, a bow to it so that when you tighten it, it actually does pull the neck. Uh, in this case, because it went in from the back, it had to have an up bow in the, in the jig. If you were doing it from the front, you would put a, a bottom bow. Okay, if that makes any sense. I put the, uh, the adjuster hole through there. The uh, Telecaster that I bought in 2000 had a little black plastic ring that inserted in that hole. I built a little ring out of what looks to be mahogany 
and uh, built it, drilled the hole out of it, pushed it into the cavity there, and uh, was able to, I mean, that's a less than a sixteenth of an inch wall thickness on that little tube going in there. I used to, uh, and still do at times, uh, see if I can get that more into the camera. I used to uh, just use a stencil and, and shoot lacquer on from my Peghead logo. Um, this has the Grover Grover tuners. I'm mean, not at a very good angle sitting here on my couch trying to get that up in there. Anyway, Grover tuners. The uh, This was actually just a random piece of maple I bought it at my hardwood supplier. And uh, it has some very unique, uh, well, not unique, but surprising the one I found this curl in this piece of maple. Uh, as I carved it, I was very pleased. Uh, this was just a one inch net piece of maple and I got a lot of necks and various parts out of it. It was a full on board, um, you know, eight or 10 feet long by an inch thick and by about five inches wide. So yeah. And this was the first time I sprayed a burst of any sort. This was probably the third attempt on this guitar. And if this one hadn't worked out, it was going to be pink because, uh, I watched a finishing video by, uh, Dan early wine and Don McCroskey, McCoskey, McCroskey. Okay. I can't think of his name, but they, uh, they did a Telecaster and they painted it pink. So I thought, you know what, if this doesn't work, I'm going to make it pink. Painted the back black, obviously. Um, these are freehand. I just did a freehand lineup on those things and they look as good as any I've ever done since. Probably better. I finally bought a little, little jig to help punch those through straight. Uh, anyway, and the neck has a bit of a relief. I don't know if you can see that or not. It actually tapers down right here. I keep looking at my monitor instead of my camera and I get out of, out of frame here. But there's a, you can see that it drops down. So it's not excessive, but it's probably about 3 16 that this heel block tapers. So it's not the standard chunk that you would get with a telly. Um, what else do I want? Oh, I do have a rear cavity here rather than the front plate. And uh, I have the Dunlop or Schaller strap locks. I use those on everything. Um, what else do you need to know? Oh, I built this guitar. I only had 13 16 or what they call four quarter alder on hand. And I made a sandwich of it. I split it, you know, down the middle as well as uh, on the edge. So this is actually three pieces of wood. I got the maple cap and then two pieces of the alder sandwiched together. I can see it. I don't know if you can or not. I can see a little witness line right here where the lacquer shrank back. Um, and you know, at the time I, I uh, felt pretty rinky dink because I didn't know that, uh, Gibson did that with their Les Pauls. Um, you know, for a period there in the 80s, I believe it was, where they made the uh, two or three piece sandwiched bodies. So um, it's actually, I'm just kind of checking it out here. I do see that line every once in a while. It says it's not solid all the way around, but just where the, the lacquer has shrunk back. And uh, you can see that, that little, little witness line. Anyway, that's, uh, this is what I consider Jonah number one guitar, first one I ever built, and the uh, never gonna be sold. Now to tell you, since I showed you the witness line, the only other thing about this guitar that I think is a little funky, being my, like I said, my first guitar and my uh, first one piece neck and all that, and not being 100% sure uh, what I was doing, I made the, the, uh, the peg head a little too thin. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. There's it's just a ever so slight of a bow where this peg head has just, just sprung a little bit from the string tension. Uh, it's not excessive and it's, it's really not a big deal. And if you're not as OCD as I am, it would probably never bother. Oh, you can see it there now. It's, it's got a bit of a curve to it. Um, 
that happened right away. It's never gotten worse. And so I'm, I'm pretty okay with it. Uh, although I'm pointing it out to you because, uh, you know, full disclosure, the first guitar, uh, a lot of people's first guitars don't, uh, don't stand this kind of stru uh, scrutiny, but I came out of a background of auto mechanics and cabinet shop building. Um, you know, I have my own cabinet shop. And so, uh, I was an experienced woodworker before I decided to, to try this. Anyway, that's it. That's the first Jonah guitar. Telecaster copy. Uh, hopefully I will, I will continue the series with a little more, uh, speed than, <laughs> than the first one I did. I started out with the guitar that I play all the time and I'll link it. Uh, in the in the description or up in the video itself, it's the uh, Paduk top carved top uh, guitar with the double P90s that John Williams Mick Williams John Williams uh, wound for me, um, my buddy in Tennessee. And I uh, do thank you for watching, supporting the channel any way you can. Thanks a lot.